You gotta push that button. Oh, you can do both buttons. He's a big deal on Twitter. Well, good to see you. Oh, yeah, I wore my bike East Bay t shirt. I know. So I have done probably like a half dozen of these now where people are like, oh, we want to bike with you when you come to town. So, like, I was in Cambridge the other day and, like, they had all their bike police come. We had a bike police escort. And I was like, this has gotten serious. <laughs> I'm so excited to ride with the mayor. It turns out he's not just on Twitter, he exists in real life, too. <laughs> I'm the mayor of the city of Emeryville and the chair of the Alameda County Transportation Commission. I'm in New York this week. Our county is doing a bond issuance to build transportation safety projects uh, faster ahead of schedule. And I thought with my last uh, morning here in town, I would get together with other active transportation enthusiasts and do a biking tour of New York City's newest bike infrastructure. So much power with that, it's amazing. Thank you. You're very welcome. Welcome, John. Twitter is a way of sharing brief thoughts and ideas, but uh, yeah, I guess there's something in my message that people I identify or relate with, and I've received a ton of positive feedback. So I share a lot of thoughts um, on bicycles, from bicycles, about bicycles, also walking, ha hiking. Um, you don't, it doesn't have to be bicycle-centric. Anything that gets people out of a car and puts them in community with other people is a positive contribution. Oh, he's great. Emeryville is beautiful. They're building affordable housing. And, you know, he's becoming America's mayor, certainly America's bike mayor and uh, green mayor. So, yeah. The universal language up there is delivery vehicles parked in the bike lane. Wow, that was triple, a triple. We got a triple. It's pretty exciting, and you know, it's, it's very important for our city to make connections with other cities making efforts on investing in active transportation and public transportation. So this is a very good, good exchange and see maybe, I don't know, setting collaborations in the future or at least learning from each other. Oh, I love the Brooklyn Bridge. I love bridges generally. It's like a favorite thing of mine. But to take a, a, a large historic bridge and remove a travel lane for vehicles and turn it back into active space. When people say nobody will use this, people don't want this, it's not true. It's the reality is that we haven't built the infrastructure to give people the meaningful choice they need to make the change. People don't want to be in a car. It's not a happy place. People don't want to spend money on a car, on gas, on insurance, on parking, on liability, like all the things that come with that, right? And when you give people meaningful choices, economic choices, social choices, through infrastructure changes, you can build a happier and more connected community. During COVID, New York put slow open street. streets, slow yep. streets, yep, um, all over the city. They were volunteer run. So you had to have a volunteer group that would step up and say they, they would do the barriers. Was it you? I was one of the volunteers. So for about a year and a half, every morning, drag out the barriers, put them out there every night. You take them and you stow them. Yep. We now have city funding or funding like a private nonprofit that actually does the barrier work most days. And so the next step is getting actual hardscape, getting bollards, pots, mm -hmm. paint. And you get to meet cool people like uh, Cecil who are like actually, you know, championing their own slow streets, doing the work, want better for their community. What you realize is we all have the same challenges in cities. Like every city I go to, there's like the same set of challenges. New York, again, has a ton of potential. I mean, you could literally take certain streets here, north, south, east, west, and you could turn them into bus and bike only routes across the city and create completely separated safe space. I saw how different treatments are being uh, piloted or tested in different parts of corridors. And you know, I, it's funny because I've heard some of the results of those same treatments from other cities. And it'll be interesting to see how you know, those stack up in New York, because it's a different community than Houston or Portland or Boston for that matter. What's 25 by 25? So that's a challenge. It's basically like 75% of the space is used by cars right now, so we're trying to take 25% back for other uses that are not necessarily the car. I, have a, I get a stipend and I don't have any of my own staff, no. City council in our city doesn't get staff. So you're doing all of this? I just do this because I love it. It's funny, I was on a Zoom meeting once where a lady was like, I just, she had sent a request, she was like, I just want 10 minutes of your time, and I get on the Zoom, and she's like, well, I'm sure you're very busy, and she's like, 
And maybe I, she's like, I couldn't find the email for your scheduler. She's like, maybe you could put me in touch with your scheduler. And I spun my desk chair around and I was like, hi, I'm John's scheduler. <laughs> can't in a private vehicle have 15 separate conversations with people like you could maybe do it on a train or a bus with all your friends on a trip but like today I was able to have 15 different private conversations with people on the ride and learn something about them why they enjoy biking what motivated them to come out today what they want to see happen what they like and don't like and it really um, I bring that back and that's for the betterment of my city everybody I represent benefits from me learning from people anywhere, whether that's in New York or Emeryville. What do you want us to do? When you honk at me, I just tend to bike a little slower because I concerned that means I'm going too fast. I take it as I take it as I'm going too fast. And they're in the crosswalks. Yes. 